Hello, everyone. This is Warrior Woman 91 coming to you not live with my new podcast, You Got It, with Warrior Woman 91. All right. So I haven't been around for a while, and I apologize for that. I'm going to start getting into this uh, whole podcasting thing regularly again. Please forgive me. I'm a little rusty with my speech and everything, but we're going we're gonna to just run with it because I have a lot of things to say. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, especially in the news, especially not in the news. There's a lot of stuff going on. So what I wanted to talk about today was this new unplanned movie. It's called Unplanned. It's not a movie that was unplanned. Uh, But I've been kind of getting involved, not getting involved in it. I've been researching it. I've been trolling, not trolling. I've been following it. Uh, And I've been watching all the promotional material for it. I'm fairly familiar with Abby Johnson, and just kind of, let me let me start you all back from the beginning. So, Unplanned is a movie based on a book called Unplanned, believe it or not. Uh, the book was written by a former Planned Parenthood director named Abby Johnson, and for those of you who don't know who she is, she is the Planned Parenthood director who then resigned after she witnessed a an abortion in person while watching an ultrasound. Now, this is actually just a little side note. I've actually advocated for for ultrasounds of abortions to be released to the public because I think that knowledge is power, and if people actually could see, visualize what an abortion actually is instead of being uh, indoctrinated in this euphemistic bubble of, oh, it's nothing, it's just fine, don't worry about it, it's it's women's rights, it's just a polyp, it's a clump of cells, it's this, it's that, it might be a cat for all we know, we don't know. It might be a piece of cake inside, we don't know. Um, if people could actually see the procedure in real time and, and see what's going on, uh, it would be a lot harder to defend. So, that's my little side note here. But this Planned Parenthood director, she saw it. She watched an abortion happen on an ultrasound. And the line that was fed to her by Planned Parenthood for all those years, she being a, um, a Planned Parenthood of the Year uh, employee recipient, she indoctrinated in the system. The line that they fed her was that they don't feel any pain prior to 20 weeks. They don't feel any pain, so you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to feel guilty. You don't have to. There's nothing wrong. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. So um, she watched this abortion happen on an ultrasound, and she thought, "Yeah, he doesn't. Kid doesn't feel any pain, so it's fine. No big deal." But she could see it. It was the it was visually the size of a child. It looked like a child on the screen. And what she saw was when the procedure began, and forgive me, this is gonna get graphic, but that's just the way this conversation goes. She watched as the device was placed inside the woman and began to uh, tear apart the the clump of cells looking like a human. Um, And the clump of cells started to retreat and move away from the device being used to destroy it. It's almost as if he could feel it. And so he could. The form of life that was being destroyed could actually feel itself being destroyed. And that is why... He, she was being, uh, was, was retreating. So this Planned Parenthood director after that did a 180, basically, realized that Planned Parenthood kills babies. Duh. No offense, but <laughs> that's what abortion is, people. And uh, it's, it's hard for me sometimes to understand why people are unwilling to actually look at science while pointing to me and claiming that I'm the anti-science party here. Um, She decided to err on the side of science, and uh, she quit Planned Parenthood. And uh, she, again, doing a 180, has been a, a strong advocate against Planned Parenthood. 
So fast forward several years, she's written this book about her experience, about how she herself had had abortions, about how she had manipulated other women into having abortions. It's this harrowing tale that ends with her realizing that the entire time both she had been lied to by Planned Parenthood and she had been lying to other women. Uh, so basic, that's the gist of the story. And now she's written this book and subsequently now there is a movie being made about it. So just kind of putting a halt on things, I just want to say, of course, being that being pro-life is probably my number one political issue right now. Um, I'm, I'm f wholly in support of making movies about this kind of thing and, uh, doing any kind of advocating or campaigning or whatever you're going to do to promote, uh, this cause because it's real. it is a genocide that is occurring, um, uh, with the killing of these children. But I do have some criticisms on the presentation of the movie. Some of them might be considered petty, and some of them might be considered uh, professional criticism. But um, Pure Flix is putting the movie out, which is a red flag to me in the beginning. Pure Flix is not a, a, an organization that I'm wholly on board with. Um, their, their movies... Um, they're, they're quite milk toast. They're unrealistic and they paint a very um, rainbow and sunshine uh, happily ever after kind of a kind of a, a depiction of Christianity that I do not approve of. Uh, it's not a very realistic. They, they're, they're movies that I have been exposed to are not very realistic, shall we say. So that's one strike against them putting out this kind of a movie because I would be concerned about them dumbing down the issue. Not necessarily dumbing down the issue of abortion, but not um, giving enough... Um, how do you even say it? How, not, not giving enough... There's not enough reality in their movies. And so I would be concerned that it would just be another movie about about perfection coming in into conflict with imperfection and then making the imperfect somehow perfect and that's just not that's not how real life works real life isn't perfect and there is no perfect ending so <clears throat> i haven't seen the movie i will i will give that caveat i i am very interested in going to see the movie and when it comes out next week I might have <clears throat> the opportunity to to go and see it, but um, I, I it does throw a red flag in the air for me when I see Pure Flix is putting it out. Now, secondly, my second issue is with the promotion of the movie. Um, I'm I'm just I do have a concern when I I hear and see things from whether it's from directors or from actresses or so on and so forth from people involved in the movie. That, that claim to be Christians and they go about saying things like, for such a time as this, and we are here because we're called, and we now we have arrived and we are going to turn this issue around and the culture is going to change and this and that. Guys, the culture is never going to change. We've read the end of the book. If you've read the end of Revelation... It doesn't end with, and the Christians took over America and they stopped abortion and slavery and then everything was made right again. That's not how this works. Now, we, I'm not saying there isn't any hope for abortion to be, to be outlawed in the future. I'm not saying any of that. But the idea that this one movie is going to come along and change the course of history or this... This, these directors were, were brought up by God for such a time as this. No, 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 no. You guys, you think too highly of yourselves. I'm sorry. That's just not reality. And this is kind of, this has been my issue with a lot of these kinds of films. Is, oh, I was made to make this movie. No, your life is worth more than this movie, okay? 
Just like the lives of the children that are being killed are worth more than the utensils that, or the cost of the utensils to, to scrape them out. It's just, it's not reality. It's just not reality. So that's kind of where I'm coming from on this movie. Again, I, I support making movies of this type. I support uh, Abby Johnson and, and her really, uh, her quite miraculous turnaround uh, from a Planned Parenthood director, from Employee of the Year at Planned Parenthood, to now their number one most hated individual next to Lila Rose of live action. Like they, pro I, I would not be surprised if they have, and I, I'm fairly certain I have to double check this. I don't want to say this for certain without knowing, but I'm pretty sure that both Lila Rose and Abby Johnson's had, they have their faces on wanted posters inside Planned Parenthood. If you see these women pull the red lever and call the police or whatever. So those are just my thoughts on that movie. Um, I, I just really, uh, I do have some concerns about the way it's being marketed and how it's going to come out. I, I just really don't want to see another dumbed down movie about, uh, frothy, uh, unrealistic depictions of Christians because real life depictions of Christians, uh, are a lot messier. <laughs> so I'm just really hoping I'm really hoping that, that this movie does Abby Johnson's story justice. Um, uh, as I've said, I do have concerns. I wish them all the best. Uh, but the, it, the idea that, that you, that these three people that were promoting the movie were born for such a time as this, this is nonsense. You are worth more than a singular movie or a singular event in your life. Um, and, and I just feel bad for people that think that they, they somehow their purpose is defined by any one action of theirs. So those are my, uh, those are my thoughts on that movie. The second thing I wanted to talk about is how I actually was not always pro-life myself. And it wasn't, I kind of wanted to delve into that a little bit. It wasn't that I was ever uh, pro-abortion per se. I didn't really understand what abortion was other than, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't actually think of it as killing somebody. I, I thought of it as, I, I thought of being I thought of being pro life as being the obligatory position that Christians are required to have without any thought. And so I didn't I wasn't technically pro choice or pro abortion in any respect, but I was not an advocate for the pro life position originally. I I just I did not want to even touch the issue because I didn't I didn't really believe in it. I didn't believe in it. And I didn't want to have to feel obligated to believe in something that I didn't believe in. And uh, then I had a, a kind of an eye-opening experience, um, not to the degree, of course, that uh, Miss Abby Johnson had her experience, but still one uh, that was eye-opening to me, and it just kind of drives home the fact that people need to be able to visualize this and understand exactly what abortion is outside of the euphemisms and outside of the external circumstances and so on and so forth, because it just, the issue has gotten bogged down in all of this externalities. There's too much of that garbage going around. You have to actually take abortion as the procedure that it is, and then work from there instead of, well, what about this and what about this and what about this? Actually come in and say, okay, here is what abortion is. Here is what it looks like. Here is what is done. Now you can come out of that and say, okay, is this good or is this bad? It's always the other way around. Well, this, 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 and this. Well, we don't even know what abortion actually is. We don't even know what what is done in the abortion procedure, especially when you're a teenager like I was, I was, I was like, I don't even know what this is. I don't even know what they're doing in the procedure. I don't know. So you need to know these things in order to make a decision. You need to have information. You can't make a decision without it. So 
there I was I was definitely a news junkie at the time and so I was reading I used to be a drudge addict I even have a shirt that says uh, re, uh or so, I can't remember what it says it says I love the drudge report or something like that I was a drudge Matt drudge fanatic and uh, I'm not as much anymore but back in 2015 2014 2015 he was doing some really good stuff with um with following the um, the Center for Medical Progress and their sting operation that they uh, that they put out, they were going undercover not only within the clinics but actually talking to the the top heads at Planned Parenthood as buyers for baby body parts. Now, just those words, just saying those words, kind of gives you an idea of. Okay, body parts. That's a person. Oh, that makes difference, doesn't it now? It's not just a clump of cells. They're talking about formed body parts that they that Planned Parenthood was selling and likely still is selling to buyers for experimentation whatever. They were selling body parts. Right off the bat, that kind of a light bulb goes off in my head, and I realize, okay, something. This is more. This is more than what I ever thought abortion was. I, this is more than I ever understood about it. And uh, so I started watching these videos, and they were coming out. I think once a week, uh, or maybe uh, maybe twice a week. I I forget quite the, the rate of uh, how fast the information was coming out. But I remember I watched the first video all the way through at least once, and I may have watched it a second time. And that one was the first one that was eye-opening. I believe that one was about the the Planned Parenthood exec that was um, that was, was discussing over lunch uh, the buying and selling of baby bar- body parts as she's eating her salad she's discussing the barter of body parts which is just uh medieval it's just disgusting um and so then so i that first video was the first most disturbing video i saw and then the there was a second video that was a little less grotesque as i recall bear in mind this was this was 2015 this was end of summer 2015 so I, i'm doing this all by memory the second video was a little less impactful for me because it just reinforced the first video. Um, but still, I'm I'm watching all of these videos all the way through. I'm watching all of this. And finally, the third video came out. And you guys can go and watch these videos. I believe their YouTube is Center for Medical Progress or something of that nature. In any case, the third video that came out uh, actually had baby body parts in a Petri dish. And again, I apologize for the graphic nature of this podcast, but it actually showed the pieces in the Petri dish. It's at that point that, number one, I could not finish that video and I did not watch. I think there were, there may have been a dozen of those videos. I did not watch any more of those videos. I couldn't make it through the third one after that. But that is why I became pro-life, because I realized, holy cow, that is a person, and you just tore it to pieces and put it in a dish and discussed the buying and selling of its parts over lunch. Um, I think Hitler's calling. I think he's, uh, he's wanting his, uh, his evil plot back. Uh, I think this is bad. This is really bad. You guys need to stop. Um, I'm just saying, okay. Yeah, that's bad stuff. That is horrifying, inhumane, disgusting, evil stuff. You cannot excuse that kind of barbaric, cannibalistic behavior. The buying and selling of body parts that you just ripped up after having told its mother that it doesn't feel any pain. By the way, the fact that we're even discussing whether something feels pain or not, doesn't that indicate that um, that that's a person? Like, even if the person doesn't feel pain, like, I don't feel pain when, 
I had surgery when I was 16. I didn't feel any pain when I was in the surgery. Does that mean that I'm not a person anymore because I didn't feel the pain? I didn't realize that pain receptors were the thing that made you human. Because uh, they numbed me up pretty good for that surgery uh, when I was 16, and uh, I did not feel a thing. I had blood gushing from my feet. I remember seeing it, and uh, I didn't feel any of it. Does that mean that I am somehow less of a human being because I didn't feel that? No, I don't think that's how it works, guys. Again, not science, but we don't talk about that here. We don't talk about science. <laughs> All right. So that's how that's why I became pro life. Again, because I saw it. I saw the pieces all not coming together and coming together in the petri dish. You can't look at something like that and say, "Oh no, no, no. That's that's not. That's not. That's just fine. That's that's just a thing that is done." As you guys can hear, I uh, I could go on about these subjects for quite some time, but uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up for this first episode. I do plan on having longer shows and talking about some pretty uh, interesting things. Whether it, I know this first episode is kind of dark, but this is the number one issue for me politically right now. A lot of the other issues have kind of fallen by the way. Feel free to send me in your questions or concerns or topics that you want me to talk about. Guests you might want to have on, that's certainly on the table. I really want to have, like, uh, you know, Ariel Davidson, Cassie Dillon, a couple of the other people I had from the old show, Renegade Millennials, of course, Amanda Prince, Giacomo. We need more women on these shows, okay? So they're probably going to come on. Uh, or at least I will extend the invite and we'll see if they, uh, if they want to join me on my new show. But, uh, I just want to discuss things. I want to discuss politics. I want to discuss dance. I want to discuss some of the other things that I'm interested in besides just politics. Uh, maybe even, uh, you guys might see more of my cats. I don't know. I got all kinds of crazy stuff going on. I'll have all kinds of guests going. Uh, shout out to, uh, some of my favorite people on Twitter at Matt's Idea Shop, at Neon Taster, at Ben McDonald. Uh, those are kind of a couple of people that I really enjoy following uh, on Twitter these days. So definitely check them out. All right, you've been listening to You Got It with Warrior Woman ninety one. <laughs>